The drive from that engine is just incredible. Instant power. So the GT did it in a 3.93 seconds. Orange hat, orange motorcycle, blue car. Orange hat, orange bike. Welcome back to another KTM review. This is the brand new Super Duke Evo. Now the Evo version of the Super Duke has fully electronic suspension, fully adjustable electronic suspension. And it's, it's basically WP's next gen version of the electronic suspension, quite similar to what's on the Super Adventure. So join me for a little thrash around on this bike. I'll sort of let you know whether I think this is worth the extra money over the standard Super Duke. It's another couple of grand this bike. It's pushing 18 grand now, so it's getting rather expensive. Is it worth the extra for electronic suspension? I've also had this bike on track at Cadwell Park last week. So I'll let you know what I think to it on track, include a bit of footage of me blasting past sports bikes is always good. But I'll let you know what I think to this machine. So join me for a bit of a spin, make yourself comfortable, grab a cup of tea and chopsy, roll the intro. It's always an event, don't just stay, it's always an event when you uh, ride a Super Duke. It's always, it's one of those bikes, a lot of people ask me, you know, if I were to buy a bike, what would I buy? You know, a bike I didn't already own. I think it's one of these. I think this is my favourite naked on the market today. The Super Duke, well, maybe not the Evo, but we're going into all that. But the Super Duke, I think, is my favourite. Uh, super hyper naked, any sort of naked. I absolutely love this thing. So um, this review is going to be a little bit gushy about this bike because I think it's a fantastic naked machine. It's got hooligan written all over it. They might as well just call it the 1290 Hooligan R. That would be a better name for this thing. <laughs> bit faster revving, a bit more angry sounding than the GT. So the Super Duke is a bike I love. This is sound of the base similar to the video <laughs> for the GT the other day. If you didn't see that by the way, link at the top. I reviewed the GT version of this a couple of weeks ago. But this is the brand new Super Duke Evo with the fancy lecky suspensions all singing, all dancing. They've added electronic suspension to this to sort of bring it up the same features and functionality that the Tuono has because that now has electronic suspension of course I think they've done the same for the Super Duke and what KTM has stuck on it is what they're calling their next generation the WP next generation make it so electronic suspension rather than having servo motors to adjust things it's done with magnets so I guess it's a lighter system you know, maybe, I don't know if it's any more accurate, but I guess it's just a weight saving, but it's all done, it's all magnetized. Bloody magnets. The suspension is the thing which separates the Evo, you know, from the standard Super Duke. There's no other changes, it's just that suspension. And what I found, and as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've had this bike on track. So I've been lucky enough, and KTM let me take this bike on track at Cadwell Park. And uh, obviously, when I was on track, I tried all sorts of settings. You've got a track mode on the suspension. You've got uh, like a, a, a custom mode, an advanced mode, where you can sort of set things manually, like the how hard and the damping on the front and rear and all that sort of thing. Oh, I said we may have a little bit of water today, didn't I? I wasn't wrong. And what I found really good was just to have it in track. And then I tried a man, because I'm a big fatty, 20 stone, six foot two i actually had the rear preload on 90 percent so i had the rear preload round right up puts it on its nose a little bit more you know to compensate for the weight over the back and it was brilliant i had the anti-dive on because this has got the anti-dive like the super adventure basically stops the front diving too much that's quite a lot of front brake <laughs> so it's obviously going to dive but as you go on the brakes it increases the damping to, to stop it, you know, diving as much as possible. Obviously it will dive, it's not telelever, but it just increases the firmness of the front forks, you know, via the, the compression damping. 
and stops it, you know, just gives it a bit of resistance to the braking. And that, that's, that's fantastic, that anti-dive. It works brilliantly on the Super Adventure because, of course, the Super Adventure, you know, has longer travel suspension because it's uh, an adventure bike. But on here, of course, you've got more road-based suspension. So you perhaps don't notice it working quite as much as you do on the Super Adventure, because that's got the longer suspension, but you can still definitely notice it working. And uh, if you have it on and off, you will end up leaving it on because it works very well. Oh, the drive from that engine is just incredible. The engine is slightly more responsive, slightly less vibey, just slightly more polished than the, ver the Gen 2 version and the Super Duke GT version. It's definitely, you know, slightly easier to ride. The suspension doesn't train. You know, all of those things I mentioned in that GT review. It just, it's just nicer on this. I mean, it is a lighter bike than the GT, of course, but it's not just that. It's that more, more rigid, fr rigid, 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 rigid. That frame, that different frame makes all the difference. More rigid, rigid, rigidity, rigidity. <laughs> well, we sort of got there in the end. But you know what I mean? This frame is more rigid, <laughs> I'll do it again, than the old GT Gen 2 version. It's it's much better, but the linkage on the rear, the rear swinging arm, it's more balanced, there's less weight transfer. Basically, all those changes add up to a much better handling bike at the end of the day. Also, the motor is slightly less chuggy. You know, it can't. I found the the GT was you know it's a tiny little bit hard work lower down. You'd have to get the revs right, be a bit more careful with the clutch. This is much smoother. Overall, smoother, more well polished, smoother and better polished. 175 horsepower. I think it's about, uh, might be just over 175, pushing 180 horsepower and 140 newton meters of torque. I mean, this engine is incredible. 1301 cc. There's a reason, you know, this bike is called the beast. <laughs> it's, it's down to that motor. So at the moment, I have this bike in the automatic suspension setting. Cause you know, the suspension is the main difference with, you know, I've reviewed this bike multiple times. So the, the, I'm gonna concentrate mainly on the suspension as part of this re review, because this is the Evo version. And I'm in the automatic mode. And basically what that does, it uses throttle input. It uses your speed, you know, what gear you're in, what, what lean angle you're doing based on what you know, the IMU information. And it adjusts the suspension based on how you're riding. So if you slow it down, you start to poodle, it will all soften up. If you go on it, get on the gas, start putting in some, uh, you know, lean angles, it's going to start firming things up. And you may think, well, you know, can it react quick enough if I suddenly decide to go, you know, it, it reacts very, very quickly. And I think, again, that is another reason for switching to the magnetised suspension. It sort of reacts much quicker than a servo. So, you know, it's analysing the suspension however many times a second, you know, multiple, multiple times a second. So if you do change your riding style, open it up aggressively, it's going to firm everything up in anticipation. So now I've sped up, you know, I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of lean angle. The suspension should now be adjusting and doing its thing. I haven't got to worry about what mode I want, because it is a bit annoying, you know. You've got throttle position modes, so you think about whether you want sport, whether you want street, you know. You, and then you've got to think about what suspension do I want? Do I want sport? Do I want comp? So you just end up playing with settings. Having that auto is nice, because you set it, set and forget, basically. Let the bike sort it out for you, because otherwise it just becomes a, you know, I want this now, I want that now, and it's distracting when you're riding. And I think that is why a lot of people were sort of getting a little bit fed up with you know these very latest bikes with all this electronic wizardry on them you know it's like and i think this is why my gsxr is so good because it's, it's back to basics because you don't want to be thinking well, am i in the right mode am i have i got the right setting because if your bike's in the wrong setting it can really spoil the ride you know so it's nice to the more things which can just be set to auto get on with it the better in my view the things i've found with electronic suspension in the past is you sacrifice a little bit of feel from the tarmac you know because it's electronic it's a bit of a magic carpet ride remember people used to say what's well, a magic carpet ride that's because you lose 
some of that feeling from the road and that's fine on an adventure bike you know that's fine on a gt machine that's a big old tractor but on a sports bike on a super naked you want to keep that response you want to feel what your front wheels do you want to feel how much grip you have at any given moment and uh, this system I can feel the road beautifully. I can feel every little bump, every little texture of that tarmac in front of me or underneath of me. You know, it's it's a very, very good system. You're not compromising feel. The standard Super Duke, I'd never had a problem with the suspension. I thought it was a fantastic setup. You know, it was reasonably comfortable and lovely over the bumps and it had that feedback and, you know, it was, it was very, very, very well set up, the standard suspension. So whether it is worth the extra £2,000 to get this electronic stuff. This electronic stuff is great, you know, I can't see anything wrong with it. And if you do bang it in comfort, it's definitely, you can feel it's more comfortable. You know, when you go into the track mode, it's a really hard one, you know. So, it, I don't know, I, I don't know whether I would spend the extra 2000 on the Evo. If money's no object, it is definitely better. But there's not a lot wrong with the standard Super Duke in my view, so. Just bear that in mind. If you can afford it, get it. If you can't, you're not missing out too much. And of course, the standard when you can still adjust it, just means you've got to get your spanners out. So, you know, if you're on a track day, well, look, run out. I was, just, I was t tensing up for those big bumps there. It didn't happen with this suspension. But if you're on a track day, you know, you can still adjust it. Just get your spanners out. <laughs> it's not like it's non-adjustable. You're just going to get your hands dirty. So there she is, the Super Duke Evo in all her beauty. Much better looking than the Super Duke GT. There's nothing wrong with the front end of this motorcycle. It's not only the mothers which love this bike, but let's take a closer look. Up front, we've got the Stylema calipers and 330 millimeter Brembo discs. The stoppers on this bike are beautiful. Loads of feel, brilliant Brembos. And this little bit of blue trimming around the suspension. Blue means electronic suspension. This is that new WP Apex suspension. Semi-active technology. Ooh. There is your rear shock, your semi-active rear shock. I mean, it's not, it's, not, it's not too many wires. There's not a big, you know, it's all quite an enclosed system. It doesn't really look any different to you know, normal suspension. You know, there's no motors apparent on it. So uh, yeah, you haven't got great big motors and things hanging off because this all works on magnets, apparently. Magnets. Back for 2022 with the full orange wheels. A lot of people complain that keeping the orange wheels clean can be a bit of a pain, but I don't mind. I love the orange wheels. I'd perfectly be happy to keep these clean. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go into some of the settings of the screen because, you know, being... Uh, because this has got all the suspension adjustment on this one it's worth just covering it one thing you can do on this one is it's got the anti-dive like the super adventure to cut down on dive from the front which is quite a nice well it works very well preload you know you can go in and you can set your preload you know you can manually set how much rear preload you want i just have it on auto high because i'm a bit of a fatty we go into the damping setting, you can have it, well I've been running it basically automatic on street and then it sort of decides what it wants to be based on how you're riding, but you can adjust it all down to an advanced, yeah, it, there's all sorts of settings of this suspension. You can really tailor it and uh, yeah, it's very nice. Whereas the GT, everything is on the screen, it's all very easy. You know, it takes a little while to figure out where everything is on the, uh, the Super Duke. It's not quite as easy to use as the, uh, as the GT, just because the screen's a little bit smaller. There is that beautiful headlight. I do like the look of the Super Duke. I do like this slightly newer, more sculpted headlight. And then you've got the, the inlet to the airbox is right in there. You can just see the meshing in the middle there. Sexy little rear end on it. I love the little rear lights on that, very sexy. And then all of this subframe is like a composite. It looks a little bit plasticky would be my only criticism but it's like a composite material but <laughs> it's just a posh name for plastic there's that frame which is a supposedly three times more rigid rigid has three times more the rigidity 
of the old Super Duke 2 frame and the Super Duke GT I was riding the other week. That's it really, I mean I don't know what else to say about it. it is, it's a Super Duke, you know, people are quite familiar with them these days. There's not much more I can say, so I'm just going to jump back on. I do love a Super Duke, I, you know, I just love that power delivery. I just love the way you've got instant power. Doesn't matter what gear you're in, you have instant response. And that's why I love it, I think. I mean, the Tuono, you know, again, that, 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 that's got a bit more mid-range. It's not got quite as much instant response as the Super Duke. It's got more, it's got a very strong mid-range, the Tuono. But I just love the Super Duke. And I think, you know, for a bigger guy, if you're a bigger guy, I'm six foot two, 20 stone, you know, I was 19 now, I've, I've, I've been living the high life, I've gone up a bit again, I'm more like 20 again now, I'm sorry to say, but if you're a bigger guy, the Super Duke fits a bigger guy better, I think, than the Tuono. The new Tuono is much better than the old Tuono, from a, if you're larger, but I still think the Super Duke is the ultimate larger guy naked, and don't forget, the Super Duke is also you know, a dedicated naked, made from scratch as a naked. It's not a converted sports bike. Oh, it's a bit damp. It's a bit damp on my hill climb. That's a shame. We're not going to be able to lay her over fully. So much power. So much power. Beautiful engine braking as well. You, you don't have to go for that brake. You could just use the engine braking. <laughs> yeah, it, it handles. I mean, around Cadwell Park, I took the SMCR as well. So I actually, I've had a little look through the video I did and, you know, overlaid some video. And actually, Cadwell Park's a really tight, twisty track. I'll chuck some video up on the screen. And comparing lap times on this to the SMCR is actually not really much in it, to be perfectly honest. This does handle, but Cadwell is so tight and twisty that my little SMCR actually, it was a, it was about half a second slower per lap than I was on the Super Duke. I did get held up on the Super Duke in a few places on my lap. So I think there's probably another couple of seconds in it if I didn't have that traffic. But um, yeah, it's amazingly, an amazing circuit. And the SMCR was absolutely brilliant. I think you can hold a bit more corner speed on the SMCR and even on this. But uh, yeah, there you go. That, that's the comparison between the laps on the SMCR and the Super Duke. And I will be doing a full video, a full type vlog type video of the two days we spent at Cadwell Park. So keep your eyes peeled and subscribe for that. On the motorway, yeah, 80 mile an hour is your maximum cruising speed because it's just too darn windy at anything over 80. And even prolonged 80 is hard work. So. You know, if you want to do miles and be a hooligan, the GT is still the bike because, you know, you, you've got no screen on this and you can feel it when you're at speed. Quick shifter and blipper is also much better on this than it was on the GT version. Again, that just comes down to that polishing which KTM have done, you know, on this Gen 3 version. If you do run it with the wheelie control off, and if it is really off, you've got to be careful this thing is so responsive I think this bike has the best throttle connection than any bike you know any modern bike ride by wire bike I've tried it is so precise the throttle input on here you know it's almost feels like it's a sort of one-to-one -one throttle it's not but it's just so precise you know you the finer inputs just really come across and uh, yeah, I think it's one of the best throttle connections on any bike, but you've got to be really careful because if you give it too much, it will really lunge forward, you know, like it's sort of a one-to-one -one throttle connection. It's not, but that's how it feels. It's got that much grunt straight away, this engine. And you could accidentally handbag it and flip it, I think, if you're a little bit lazy, a little bit tired, and you accidentally give it a bit too much in first or second. <laughs> It's a beast! Shh, 
shall we give it a little bit of a nod to 6D? I did mention in my GT video, I'd see if I could beat my 4.83, whatever it was, for the GT 0 to 60. I'll give it a little whirl on here. I'll give it a little whirl. This this is a lot more aggressive than the GT. Now I mentioned the speed testing when I did the uh, the GT, and this is just for fun. You know, this isn't official <laughs> figures. I'm never going to launch this like a professional racer. You know, I'm not a professional racer. But I think what this sort of launching does prove is you know, how it, how easier but some bikes you'll find the clutch is really difficult to get off the line you know and it just makes it shows how easy the bike is if it, if it will even launch easy and how good the electronics are if they keep the front wheel under control so even though you know this sort of bike will be at 60 in the blink of an eye or maybe quicker than four point whatever it was 3.93 seconds was it no was it four point so the gt did it in a 3.93 seconds the best ever 0 to 60 I've done was on the Energica, the electric bike, which is 3.81. So 3.81 is the best ever. I don't think I'm gonna. Let's see if I can beat the GT 3.93. I don't know. I don't know. Let's have a look. So I put it in street mode because the wheelie control is uh, a bit more forgiving in in, in street mode. I'd never try this with the wheelie control off. It would be a recipe for a disaster if you try and launch this with the. <laughs> With the wheelie control off and i say i don't launch powerful fast bikes because you know it all comes down to the riders you know, the riders less about the bike more about the rider but i think it is a good way of showing how easy a bike is to ride if you can launch it easily or if you make a right pig's ear of it and i never do it more than twice because if you can't get it right twice then it's obviously not easy to ride so that's the whole point of this test you've got to be able to you've got two tries at it and that's it. Cover the rear brake. She's lively. Yeah, that's more difficult to launch than the, the GT. For sure, that's more difficult than the GT because it wants to wheelie more than the GT. There's more weight on the GT. So let me try that again. Two times I said, I don't think I'm gonna beat the GT. It's too lively for the rear brake in case the wheelie control goes mental. <laughs> Nought to 60. It's not there. It's not working. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. After all that, didn't get a result. So there's 0 to 60 in 30 seconds. So that's a shame. So I don't know what's happening there but I can't give you the official 0 to 60 times on the on the Super Duty Evo. I'm really annoyed by that, but it, it was definitely harder to launch than the GT because it's a bit lighter, it's a bit more aggressive. I mean, the wheel was in the air. You can't sort of, you give it full power and the wheel comes up. You know, you've got to limit the power. So it's, it's getting to the point where, as I said, you know, if the bike's really powerful, it makes it harder, you know, you'd be better doing like a 0 to 100 and of course you can't do that on the road, so. Now this is at the point where it's too powerful to properly give it a decent 0 to 60. So there you go, there's the limit. So the Super Duke Evo, yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic. If you can afford it, get the Evo version. The electronic suspension works brilliantly on it, it really complements the bike but the standard version is also very, very good. The standard suspension is a really well set up system. So if you can't afford that extra couple of grand, 18,000 pounds, because I mean, it's just 18,000 pounds, a lot of money. And I'm not sure the fit and finish is at the level when you, if you say an 18,000 pound motorcycle, you know, when these were like 14, yeah, fair enough, 14, but eight, eight, it's a lot of money. But, so if you can't afford the 18, you're not being hard done by with the non-Evo version. That suspension is very good on the standard one. So, but if you've got the money, you can afford it. This is definitely the ultimate and it does work very well. But there we are. Will I have a Super Duke in the garage one day? It's quite likely. <laughs> I think it's quite likely I will because I absolutely love this thing. If you want to see more of my Super Duke reviews, 
I'll put some cards up somewhere on the top of the screen there. Have a look. If it's your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. I do all sorts of bike reviews. I've got a lot of good stuff coming. Like I say, the Cadwell videos of this and the SMCR should be really good. Womble was there and Andy as well. So we've got a bit of a vlog a vlog from Cadwell. I've also been invited by Triumph back to Cadwell. They've got like a press day for the uh, Speed RR around Cadwell Park and they said do I want to come and ride the Speed RR around Cadwell Park and I'm like mm, yes I do so I'll be going to Cadwell next month again on the Speed RR this time and it'll be quite interesting to see the lap times between this and the, and the Speed RR so if that sounds of interest press that subscribe button and join the fun thanks for watching guys see you next time this is power level one which is full power. This bad boy. I could do that all day. What has she done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped the bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Never mind getting beard up. Give me this any day of the week. <laughs> oh,